We're Nightly News. Well, we're Night's Watch, and this is Nightly News. What, you don't like this? Not smooth Welcome enough, back to The Watch, you stupid bastard. Welcome back to The Watch. Is the channel called The Watch? Night's Watch. Night's... Welcome back to Night's Watch. This is Nightly News. You go. You do it then. You do a better job. You do a better job. I want you to learn how to do it. I think. Greetings, I'm Shad, and today we're talking about why Oz is a retard for the fifty thousandth time. Welcome back to the Watch. We are the Night's Watch, mm. and this is an episode of Nightly News. Nightly. We Nightly news. We discuss the news. We don't present it. Yeah, don't trust what we say. Yeah. We we put in fake things, say fake stuff on purpose, mm. just so you have to double check it. If you care anything about the state of the world or your family's future, you will not mistake us for a news channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's for your own good people. So, to kick us off, uh, Nathan's just leaving. Mike. What are you doing? The Can microphone wasn't on for the backup. Uh, but it is now. <laughs> well, Nathan's back. <laughs> Nathan's back. <laughs> After so a short delay. First, first news article. Uh, the next news article. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Nathan. <laughs> show and tell. Show and tell. Oh, I've got to show. I can't read. Can you reach that? The name of the wind. I got some new leather bounds. These are custom made name of the wind leather bounds. What is the name of the wind? Um, is it Jeff? No, uh, no, The Name of the Wind is a book series. Um, the King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. Brilliant book series. Um, uh, oh, I love it. But and what's so, the wind's name? The thing is, well, so, the, one of the magics in this series is the concept of names. Mm -hmm. And so, to know uh, something's true name, it means you can control it yeah. and bend it to your will. Common thing in fantasy. Yeah. But he, he executes it really well, mm. that... The true name of something is actually kind of uh, understanding every single facet about it on a uh, subconscious level. Um, and they kind of compare it to like, um, uh, you can throw a ball and hit where you want, um, just subconsciously. You don't need to calculate the exact trajectory of the math, you just know it. And they kind of know, like, na knowing the name of something is like expressing everything that the concept of the true soul of what it is. That, and you can't actually say the word because mm. it's too simplistic. But when you... I, what are you... <laughs> Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> what was so funny? <laughs> Nothing that I could say on YouTube. <sighs> okay, show and tell. Okay. Beautiful books. And we've got Wise Man's Fear there as well. And Princess Bride. Uh, just... Beautiful additions to my lovely collection. Uh, two things I printed this week is this thing for Shad, but it hasn't yeah. finished yet. I've got to do a bit more coats on it to clean Aww. it up. It's going to be my uh, personal coaster. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. I was thinking of making it a badge for you. Yeah. Badge of um, honour. Uh, still got to clean it up though. You can see it. It looks great. Um, and I'm working on this cloud strife for someone's birthday. I'm not going to say who. Oh, we, it's pretty obvious. Oh yeah, we all saw on Facebook, yeah. Um, for a friend's uh, birthday, and yeah, so I did a little custom base with a cloud on and it. And you printed that. You yeah. didn't have to pay for it at all. So I still got to do the arms and the shoes and the pants, but otherwise most of it's done. Look how super Aryan he is. Hmm. Crazy Aryan. Anyway, I think a bit too much. I've got to make him a bit more Japanese. So that's what I've been doing. For the past weekend, hey. hmm. just listen to audiobooks hmm. and painting. What about you, Nathan? I bought a cover for my barbecue over the weekend. Have you used it? My barbecue? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's been great. Made some good steaks. I want to do. I want oh, to really? A... Oh, yeah. really? Oh, really? It wasn't a sandwich press, Shad. Okay. It wasn't oh! that. <laughs> but it was oh! a good steak on the barbecue. Oh! Are you gonna take that? Are you gonna take that? Oh! Cheeky bastard. <laughs> Nathan, <laughs> you haven't had my fire cooked steak, so screw you. Dude. Now, and now you don't get him. The last thing I saw something burned that hard, Shad made a steak. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I knew what Shad's. You're being mean to me! Just move on! Oh, you don't like it when people are mean to you? <laughs> I deserve it. I'm... No, and you, as long as I said barbecue, Shad would be like, really? Good steak? Well, have you tried my sandwich press steak? Because I've heard it before. They're very good. Yeah, yeah, I believe you. It's an economic use of steak. Mm. Because but it's just like... 
Make it in like nice. less than five minutes, cook per <sighs> Well, you can make it in less than five minutes. If you have a hot enough stove or, you know, thing you just... It's, mm. it's, yeah. So you've got to cover for your... Yeah, it's a small <clears> thing, but like, I went to barbecue shop and the stuff they have there... What? I'm holding back. Holding back? Okay, he's holding back. What, the fact that my barbecue is a mess is a ruin? It's like, <laughs> like Kazakh Doom from no, Lord no, of no, 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 I could be mean, but I'm not going to. Okay. Go on, go on. What, you don't like my steak? No, I just... You don't like that it takes me 20 minutes yes, to get yeah, the steak I was going to be a dig at him, I wasn't even related to you. Oh. Ooh. Oh. You're well, so please. sensitive. Go ahead then. I'm sorry, <laughs> insecure, Chaz, huh? It's like, what, what, what are you going to teach me about this time, Shad? Is it my ruined barbecue? Is it where I bought it? <laughs> I'm just preempting the insult. <laughs> I'm not insecure about it. <laughs> anyway. But no, that's basically it. You know what, I'm going to print off another one of those, and it will be my coaster. <laughs> Gosh, <coughs> <coughs> I'll so make defensive. You one I'll make you one as well. Do you make want me a coaster? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Get some Night's Watch coasters. Hey. Ooh. Okay. Um. Yeah. And what else? Sorry to anything else. Barbecue. Barbecue. Cover. Just simple things in life. Very boring. They make... But it was nice to have. I guess. I can... Next time? I don't know. Have a more interesting Yeah, do, you, do something more interesting. <laughs> I'm getting back at him. I did. I, 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 the I, night before, I had a poker game with my in-laws. You better not have played with real money. But a uh, funny thing though, right? We got HSPs beforehand. You could if you just gave it back there. Yeah, true. And um, we ordered the wrong type. HSP, what's a HSP? Uh, it's a, it's called a halal snack pack. Basically, it's just chips and mm -hmm. then lamb and cheese and sauce. Ah. Real meaty goodness. The halal snack packs, do they come from the halal snack bar? Okay. I don't know if that's a joke, Oz, or you're just trying to be funny, or... No, it's just, that's a restaurant they sell this halal snack packs. Oh, probably, yeah, but the kebab shops do it. Okay. But they are about that big. I don't know, even bigger. 20 bucks, and I got like six of them, and we couldn't eat one of them. And so, in my fridge right now, there is four boxes, and I took one today to work to eat because we have so much. We'll try it out! So, for the low price of 20 bucks, you too can get heart disease. Yeah, it's it's quite hardy stuff. <clears throat> but I had, you know, I did things, just, I did the 3D printed <laughs> stuff, or, or buy a leather bound book. Or do like... anything cool. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, you know. Um, no, I don't really want <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah. No, no, it's more, it's more like, you know, all I do is sit at my computer, print and listen to books. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, he gets to spend time with his wife. And yeah, I know. It's just like, who I'm has the here more, alone. Who has the more fulfilling life? I've got yeah. books. Sorry. <laughs> I'm more Not even reading the book, I'm just listening to them. I know. But, I didn't uh, even buy it to read it. I just wanted to look at it. Because <laughs> I listen to the audio books. I don't even read them. <laughs> I'm a fraud. <laughs> it's all for show. But it looks really cool. But it's also to honour the coolness of the book. That's what I like. I like the sexual book. I want it on display to appreciate. Mm. Mm. Sexy books. Mm -hmm. Mm. Love leather bounds. Yeah. You don't even want to know what he uses as a bookmark. Moving on. Oh, and I, I finished uh, two more Horace Heresy books. Hey. And I actually really like... Like, I know I've I've read, you know, lots of the First Testament and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but it's hard to get a lot of personalization from those texts. Mm -hmm. But hearing stories, right, this is just a bit of a, you know, big brain thing. Hearing stories allows you to personalize a lot more and, like, understand where the actual emotion comes from. And so mm -hmm. I found it a lot easier to be a bit more disciplined, like, listening to stories of, like, good people becoming corrupt and... Mm -hmm. Even better people not being corrupt. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's what the whole Horace Heresy is about. But great story. I've gotten through four books so far in the past week. So, should we get on to the news? What are you talking about? We've been doing news all... Like, it's all been news. Don't you want to learn it or hear about what's happening in our lives? Should we get on to the news that matters? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. uh, okay. Oh, guys, did you hear? The Rams won the 2022 Super Bowl! Woo! Who cares? Yeah, no one. Um, actually, actually, millions of people... Okay, that's a bit far. Millions of Americans care. That's the thing with the ball, right? Mm -hmm. And they try and run with it. Yeah, so... It. Okay. 
it's kind of like um, you played Conan, right? Yeah, yeah. You know how Conan. your goal is to get into their base and get out with stuff. Yeah. Well, in football, it's kind of like that, but you just have to get one single egg-shaped ball over their line, and they have to try and stop you. Why using... is it egg-shaped? That would be a really awkward shape. It wouldn't roll right or bounce. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Like, like you, you would want a round ball, mm. and it would roll where you. Sounds, I, don't, I don't get it either. Sounds um, retarded. And you know, your foot doesn't touch the ball that often. So if anything, the the British football has more claim. Hang on, hang on. Football. Wait, wait. They call it football? They call it football, yeah. They're touching with their hands an awful lot. Just and saying. they barely use their feet. I mean, yeah. Well, they use their feet to run. Yeah, I was going to And say it's it not even a proper ball. No. Like, what, what sh is foot egg? Uh, no, foot no, not even foot egg. Hand it's egg. like hand egg. <laughs> with... with, with Fixed and the name terminology of this yep. weird yeah, thing. All right. So, yeah, uh, congratulations to the Rams, whatever state you represent, whoever the hell you are, we don't know. <laughs> We're Australian, and that game's silly. Uh, okay. Over $200 million worth of NFTs stolen in a phishing scam. Now, here's the crazy thing, right? The biggest scam is the NFT itself. Yeah, I'm starting to get really suspect on NFTs. Yeah. Uh, like... They like to me, they hold no true value at all. Like, just like it's nothing. just a file that's held on a particular server that has uh, the right type of blockchain coding to say you purchased it and own it and belongs to you. Yeah, mm. it's basically it, like you can copy it. You're hundred percent. Like it's a digital thing. Someone else could have it, and. Uh, you can just hit. I. There's no like utility use for it other than just yeah, owning it. Yeah, to me, a uh, exclusive type of DLC in a game has more value than an NFT. Especially uh, like the NFT does nothing unless you people are trying to do NFTs in games as DLC items, which is cringe. But also, mm. you can just um, copy and paste an image. Like, you didn't need to do any phishing. I know. As you soon as it appears just... on your screen, you can just screen capture it. Yeah, print screen. Problem solved. But it just copies screen shot, pasted in Photoshop, save. Yeah. I mean... See, one of those ways of acquiring an NFT is highly illegal. And they really? chose the highly illegal one. Yeah, phishing scams. What, mm. what do you mean? Phishing, using email phishing, is illegal. It's hacking. That's like 10 years, What's 12 years. What's email phishing? Basically, you send someone a thing saying, oh, your account is under attack, click this link to shore up your account, and they click it, mm -hmm. their entire computer is now yours. Well, that account is now yours. Like, so no, 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 their it, computer. It was like, back then, with um, a few months ago, we had that thing with YouTube, and how people's YouTube accounts got hacked into from the, the email, Which asking for... I did not fall for. Yeah. I got the email, and I was like, this is total. And yep. that is phishing. Yeah, they had okay, that. Okay, so uh, I've been the target of phishing, but I don't take the bait. Yes. Mm. So a lot of people fell for the bait, despite being tech nerds and you know being you know part of the bro NFT blockchain. They fell for it. Um, so they had a, an email to make it look like it was from OpenSea, which is like the big market where all they have the NFTs. And what you do is you you know they say, oh we I don't know if it was like a user agreement or something. They click on it, sign in, and then by signing in, that person now has your details because it was a fake website that you signed into. Mm. And then what they did was, I, I did some research, and I don't know how true some of this stuff is, because when I calculate the numbers, I'm like, that doesn't really add up, and if this was a big story, it would probably be a bit more wider known. Um, but apparently they, so they, they stole all of these NFTs and they sold them. That was the whole point of... How, do you, how did they steal the NFTs? So what they did was they, they took someone's accounts, mm -hmm. and then they transferred those NFTs to their <clears> accounts, <throat> oh, okay. from the stolen accounts. That's such a shame that they managed to... To steal and sell such a priceless artwork like Ricky Berwick Pepe. <laughs> um, and then apparently from the money they made, they made 1.7 million Ethereum from those... Ethereum or Ethereum? Ethereum. Okay. Um, which calculated to like 6 billion Australian, or 4 <laughs> billion US, which is a lot of money. And so I don't know if, how it works exactly. <laughs> You sure that conversion is correct? I checked it. Uh, are you sure it wasn't one point? I don't know. My calculations million. could be off. That's why I'm saying I don't trust it. How could your calculations be off? You have glasses. I know. I wasn't very good at math in high school. Me neither. My teacher told me to, to drop out. <laughs> Breaking really? stereotypes, left, right, and center. And you're our tech guy. 
No wonder <laughs> things go so wrong. <laughs> I can't do math. Yeah. Um, yeah, so NFTs apparently worth something. I, I really think that people actually don't know the utility and value of them, but they're trying to present that they could be the next thing and people are only buying them in case they explode like Bitcoin does. Mm. Um, uh, cryptocurrency. But I don't think it is. I don't think these things are going to have true utility. Well, the principle and the sense of reality works for like like modern day art that billionaires and millionaires sell to each other. Yeah, I know. I, I, it's really exploiting the concept of uh, value. I, I, we can uh, Something's only as valuable as people believe it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so well, it's trying to make people believe it's really valuable, at least in art. Oh, my stomach just made a weird noise. I know, I did. I swear, I didn't, okay. I didn't let one out. But my stomach <laughs> made a weird noise. Sure, I swear. I swear. Um, at least with modern art, you... Well, actually, at least with art, not necessarily modern art, you have something that took talent to make and pr true investment in time and stuff that can't be duplicated <laughs> instantly. Um... <laughs> Okay, so you're telling me that if, if I got a banana... No, 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 that's why I, I excluded wall, modern art specifically. Because uh, modern, okay. modern art is just garbage where they... Sometimes literal garbage. It's just this absolute <laughs> piece of crap. And uh, the amount of... It really looks like there's a lot of money laundering happening with modern art. To Wait, wait, <laughs> you're telling me... You're telling me that, that uh, the president's son... Can can sell a bunch of finger paintings for five hundred thousand dollars a piece, you know. He says it's to fund his crack, but I think it's probably going to his dad. Okay, <laughs> um, you're telling me that that's money laundering? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Mm. I think that's fake. Oh, it's just conspiracy theories. Yeah, mm. <laughs> mine wasn't though. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, so yeah, NFTs are they worth anything? Um, who knows? Technically, yes. Technically, fundamentally, yes. no. Yeah. The true price of something is what someone's willing to pay for it. Will it help you in the apocalypse? Then not, you find no. what's truly valuable. A good, solid sword. Mm. Gold and silver. Buy that. True. Silver is tremendously undervalued. It used to be worth like two hundred no, like hundred and eleven bucks um a <clears> ounce. <throat> now it's forty bucks an ounce. I reckon food is gonna be more valuable in the apocalypse. No, precious metals are, have always been valuable throughout all human history, regardless of the circumstances. No, no, no I, but food will be more valuable and more important. People will be willing to give up silver for food. And no, then I'll be like, that, why do I want silver? Well, it's doing me nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, it's a shiny bit of hard stuff yeah. that has no real utility. That's why back in the day, all of the peasants had just so much silver and gold, but they had no food. So, like, what could they do with it? <laughs> They had to go to the kings and queens to get their Are food. Are you honestly comparing an established medieval economy to an apocalypse scenario? Do you look down so much on the ancient people and of the past that you think it's all an apocalyptic thing with no economy or structure or civilization? You bigoted bastard! No, I'm saying that if we lose all of our modern technology, we return to that. What, you think they had no technology either? Oh my goodness, Oz! I'm so, your your bias and your bigotry is just hurting my soul. Now, Stuck a nerve right I'm not going to say that I don't have any of that. Uh, <laughs> but what I actually said was, if we lose our modern technology, we return to that. Modern. I reckon we'll go further back than that, though. Why? Oh, yeah, because we're all retarded. <laughs> don't know how to you build that. Yeah, do don't know how to do anything. <laughs> in actual fact, in some ways... I'm just sorry. I'm just thinking, the world ends. How to live without electricity... Why is it working? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They were so much more self-reliant in a lot of ways. You could say they were more advanced. And they were better, pe like spiritually strong and, mm -hmm. you know, people with will. Able to deal with hardships and, and they looked after their family and their yep. communities. Tighter connections. Stuff. Like, love. The modern person is so uh, Weak. impotent and reliant on the systems that are supporting their life and existence mm. that take them away, they can't do a thing. It's actually one in ten modern people are impotent. Probably. Because <laughs> one in five men is... Whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, if we lost all, like, internet and electricity, what would be the point of living? <laughs> well, kidding. I got lots of books, so I'll be fine. And then I got a big plot of land, 
to be able to live off of. Yeah, I've got a 3D I'm, I'm laying in preparations mm. for the future. You gotta hurry up, man, because it's coming quickly. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I mean, like seriously, the next house, I'm, we're putting in preparations to build the next house, and I'm gonna be building it so it is can function off grid. It mm. can heat the entire house. Uh, we're gonna have. Uh, it's like a reciprocal um, heating system, which is like um, it heats up water pipes and goes mm -hmm. through the house. And so the uh, the heating system can be electric, but also can be fire and in a boiler and mm -hmm. then send it through the house and everything. So that's good. you're gonna have um, you're gonna have wood fire stove next to the main stove for for you know cooking. And then I'm also gonna have oil lamps as well as electrical lighting. It's gonna, it's gonna be a good house. Nice, mm. nice, good house. Okay, so. <clears throat> Brian Cranston converts to communism. Who's Brian Cranston? He's Walter White and Hal from Malcolm in the Middle. The dad from Malcolm in the Middle. Okay. The main guy from Breaking Bad. Oh, okay. A mm -hmm. really talented actor who was really funny and just seemed like a generally good guy. It does. It's Hollywood. Yeah, it's Hollywood, yeah. yeah it's, he it's says, a ho Hollywood actor becomes what? communist. Insanely extreme on the left. Yeah. <laughs> he said that he has white blindness and that... The clan is still real and it's still happening. And that we need guardrails on freedom of speech. On just on speech. I don't care what he says. That's what the, that should be the response of the world. You're an actor. Shut up. Yeah. yeah. Have you done anything of true value for society? Have you studied any of these concepts? Apart like Honestly, he's probably still reading a script. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um And so I really do not give a crap what yeah. some Hollywood celebrity says that's just in line with all the other crap coming out of Hollywood. I mean, <clears throat> and I'm not saying that a Hollywood actor can't earn my respect, like Keanu Reeves, mm. you know, uh, Hugh Jackman, he seems like a pretty decent guy. Henry Cavill as well, in my respect, I just remembered a news story. Mm -hmm. He was uh, at a games workshop, work store, buying... Um, 40k. Is this the photo? Did he? And he got a photo with the with, with the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And everyone was like, Henry Cavill, yeah, not okay. just some good-looking <laughs> actor. He's actually like a legit. So he's like the most Chad dude alive, yeah. right? And the army he collects is the most Chad army in. <laughs> it's literally, it's literally the most Chad guys. They're called the custodians. They guard the Emperor of Man. They're higher than Space mm -hmm. Marines. He's, he really picked one that suited him. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Just like grounded people, like. I, celebrities that could earn my respect are people, uh, white ones that act like real, genuine, mm. common sense people. Yeah. Um, I think even uh, the guy who plays Daredevil, right? Uh, you don't mean Ben Affleck, do you? No, no, the other one. Uh, Daredevil, modern day Marvel Ma one? Uh, Charlie Cox. No, not, I mean, sorry, I'm getting confused, not Daredevil. Um, uh, Deadpool. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. At least he pushed back against all the. Un out of touch celebrity stuff. Yeah, yeah true. Like, but yeah. he still does woke bloody movies. Does he? Yeah. Free Guy. That was the most woke movie. One of the most woke movies I've seen this year. Ah, uh, uh, what? Yeah. We it guys, wasn't that, we, gotta, it wasn't we can't hurt the NPCs. Let's play games where we don't hurt NPCs. Oh, actually, they're, they're, that was so mm. stupid. Yeah. yeah. I just I just reacted to that as utter incredible stupidity, um, but you're right. That was a there it was a very big woke undertone where games are too wild, yeah, yeah. making them it, like it was that movie just attacked gamers and gaming culture, it, and it was and it was marketing to be made for it. Yeah, it's not stupidity if it happens over and yeah. over and over again. I, I agree. I agree. I, was, I well, what's your thing where he's like, I I agree. I can see. I that. agree with you. Oh, you okay. can. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, you can see. What? But give me the line. I want to see the line. You have to say I are well up. I I can see. That's I was I are well I I, I can see. Is that, that that is that how you do it? You got to channel Ben when you say. <laughs> we love you. We stole man. it from Ben. Yeah. Um. That got me distracted. Oh yeah, celebrities and stuff. Man, so many of just like. Shut up. <laughs> yep. It must be a really corrupting influence, Hollywood. So many good people have gone over there and just... Probably, yeah. You probably go to all the fancy parties and one guy c comes in with his new ideology <laughs> of stuff and everyone wants to get included and in on it. It's... I wish it, it was that simple, but it's not. I know, it's more it's, complicated than that, but... Well, actually, it's more simple in some ways. You guys would understand this better than I would, actually. It's literally the forces of Satan building power and building a power base. 
That is a neat little pot of evil where all of the evil stuff flows into and out of. And trying to influence the world. I yeah. I completely agree. Like it's interesting. Um, I was uh, listening to kind of like a statistical breakdown of standards in the world versus standards of Hollywood, and they mm. compared things like divorce rate, promiscuity, um, you know, uh, all all these things, and every single stat that was in Hollywood was vastly higher than the rest of general mainstream America. Well, that's the thing about it. <clears throat> every single statistic you could possibly quote is racist unless it comes out of the mouth of a lefty. That's just how it works. Um, okay. So, next bit of news. <clears throat> Halo. Just get it out of the way, man. Go nuts. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? His eyes are actually tearing up. Uh, Halo, <laughs> good Halo TV show will reveal Master Chief's face. <laughs> It's dead to me. I'm not. I don't. I don't like Halo anymore. <laughs> Screw you, man. No, but it's like it's a big thing. The that there's a bunch of um, what do you call it? Interviews from when Bungie was making the games, mm -hmm. where they said over and over again, Master Chief is a blank slate. He's a piece of armor that you inhabit. That's why they've mm -hmm. never shown his face, right? That's why every time he ever speaks, he sounds like Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. He says next to nothing in all of the games. And then when these other people take over, these massive lefties, they're all like, humans have a conscience. We all make mistakes. And he, you know, it's... <sighs> I'm a little divided, right? Yeah. <clears throat> On one hand, I completely agree. Like, you know, stick to the law. Master Chief shouldn't be revealed his face. On the other hand, with a TV series, you're literally trying to make a story, not a game that someone can inhabit. Yeah. I, it's perfectly fine to have a character that's somewhat blank slate-ish so the, you know, viewer can envision themselves in the role. But... I don't know, I'm not like... The point of him was he's literally like Clint Eastwood in a suit of armour. You know, mm -hmm. like Clint Eastwood... Could make... Clint Eastwood had a face still, like... Yeah, but this guy wears armour. Is, is there, like a, is there a reason in the law for him to never take off the mask? Well, one, he's really pale underneath it all because they spend a lot of time in cryo going between mm -hmm. planets and stuff <clears> like that. Because there could be a good plot point that... I don't know, it might not suit, suit his character, I was going to say that... Um... Let me be clear, right? He does take off his helmet mm -hmm. around other people as well, mm -hmm. but uh, it's just we never see his face. Mm -hmm. It's always like the camera pans out, something goes in front of his face when he takes it off, or... See, I don't know, watching a TV show, that would just kind of annoy me. Mm. Like, it would annoy me less if you just never took it off, but the, uh, to me, I feel it's like, I don't know, a bit of cinematic annoyance and it's cheap that it's like, oh, where's your wish? hiding his face and he sits down and there's something directly in the way to block his face. I just, I just, We're going to play the Halo games when the TV show comes Cause out. Because if the characters didn't show are good enough to see his face, why not? I? The only time where I th where I agreed with not showing the face when it was revealed was in V for Vendetta. Okay. Yeah, like, why? Because uh, it's funny, I was watching kind of a director's commentary on it and I can't mm. remember exactly what they said, but when I was listening, I was like, yeah, I get that. Or it's like they didn't want to go with the trope and it wasn't needed. Like, like mm. it, I think it actually maintained the mystery of who V was um, and stuff. When well, they... that's kind of point for Chief. Well, there we go, right? Maybe. I don't mm. know. Look, yeah, <clears throat> he's just a strong, silent type and the, the characters are more interesting around him than mm -hmm. himself. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I read a bit about it as well and the, the person in charge at 343 was saying that they want Chief to have more personality yeah. and feelings They've and been stuff. trying that since Halo 4 and it's and failed so all the time. That's why they're going to give him a face so we can get attached to that. But even then in the trailers and stuff, it says that Chief isn't going to be that big of a deal in the show anyways. Yeah, he's the second... He's not a main character. Yeah, There's so a, I would be Asian fine with... If, if you're doing that, <laughs> then just have him show up to this shoot some stuff and then leave. This show is going to bomb, 16-year-old Asian girl is the main character. Oh, and wow. And it's not canon, it's an it's I, universe. My heart is breaking just understanding you, how much you love Halo. You, yeah, you... you <laughs> like, I kind of looked at you and laughed when it came to Wheel of Time, and I, I apologise. I... <laughs> I empathise with you now, but I knew this was going to be bad from the beginning, and this has been happening to me since Halo 4. In it's like watching something you love just being abused in front of you. You like puppies? Everyone loves puppies, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine you had a puppy that just, you know, he wasn't very responsive back to you, but you love this puppy, and then one day someone comes along and stones it to death. and then <laughs> In says, front of you! And says, yeah, you love it, you're going to yeah, like yeah. it, right? And then shakes around like, hello, I'm your puppy! <laughs> and they expect to love it. It's dead, it's like, you know, mangled husk, and they grab the jaw and like, I, I love Oh, no. yeah, yeah. You love me, don't you? Yeah, and um, then then when you say, what the hell is wrong with you? Is this monstrosity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, you're racist, you're racist. 
<laughs> You're just an evil person for not loving you. Just you just hate me. mangled corpse of what you once loved. You just hate pit bulls. <laughs> uh, I get the reference. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, uh, okay, just last thing about it, right? Last thing that you guys won't really mm. get. Uh, there's a quote that they're doing for the show, like a tagline. It's like, find the Halo, win the war. It sounds like... Like, in the Halo universe, they didn't find it. They stumbled across it. It was an accident. They weren't looking for it. Mm -hmm. You know? No one... Oh, uh, it's going to be a treasure hunt, then. They're going to make it... Yeah, it's a MacGuffin we, they're we, looking for. We have to find the Halo. No, the, the, the MacGuffin in Halo is the index. The thing that fires the Halo. It's like... Ugh. They didn't even watch this. Cortana wasn't blue. Rage! She's meant to be blue! <laughs> double D, double die! I love it. I love it. Because this is, this is how it's me in the end up. We were time. I started listening. I'm about, I'm about a third of the way through Contact Harvest, right? Which mm -hmm. is literally the beginning of when they make first contact with the Covenant, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so good because you've got a black man character and it's a guy from the games and he's got so much soul and so much, like, depth mm -hmm. that we never saw in the games and they could have gone that way and they could have had their woke stuff, but they bloody didn't! Oh, man. They, they, they don't like it. They don't like the original thing. They see it as an opportunity to abuse, to yep. uh, push their own agenda. Yep. Um, that's what it is. It is just uh, an opportunity to them. They don't like the property at all. It's just another host. They wanna take, yeah, they want to take advantage of it. It's um, uh, the next conquest. <sighs> They're literally the flood from Halo. <laughs> just I hate it. I hate that. These people that do not respect the original material get their grubby, manipulative, subversive uh, hands on it, and they're like, "Yes, we can use it to push our agendas." Dude, that's a uh, that's exactly what they say. <laughs> Even the tone of voice, like, <laughs> "Scared." <laughs> All right. Well, I think this would be a good point to move on to Lord of the Rings because it's a bit related, unless you have more stuff. I, there's more news, okay. yeah, yeah. But no, no, more Halo stuff. Is that um, the Halo? That's the Halo. So well, well, because what I'm wondering, right, are they starting to finally lose in the sense that are people finally starting to wise up for it, to it? Because the response to the Lord of the Rings trailer has been shockingly uh, based almost yeah yeah like like so many people are not having a bar of what they've been trying to do in lord of the rings i saw discussions on this uh, in a thread last night people mm -hmm. talking about this exact same thing mm -hmm. um it doesn't matter whether they wake up to it uh, you know 99 percent of people could be like this is awful right it doesn't matter because they have to appease the esg thing they have to mm -hmm. That it's the entire economic system right now is built around that. That's why everything is going woke. It's literally the beginning of the mark of the beast. Yeah. See, ah, uh, this is the thing. As great as the um, uh, base reaction it has been to the Lord of the Rings trailer, people just roasting it and saying this is not right and everything like that. The show is still going to be, well, at least the first season is going to be very successful. Everyone's gonna watch it. They're everyone, like all these people that hate it. So many of them are gonna be hate watching it, including uh, us, because yeah. we need to see how bad it is. I'm not paying for it. I'll watch it <clears> at <throat> a friend's place. Well, let us know, right? Like because we turned a lot of people off of Wheel of Time, revealing how bad it was, and a lot of people actually were saying that they were watching our reviews of it over the show because of how bad it was, but they were enjoying the reviews, and also they really liked that we were calling out the bullcrap. Mm. And so, if that's going to be the case for um, uh, Lord of the Rings, I think we should cover it in depth. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, there were some people who were saying, I'm only watching the show so I can be informed and outraged with you guys when yeah. you review it. And so our reviews did encourage some people to watch Wheel of Time. Mm. And so, <laughs> like, because if I, if we were not doing reviews, if we were not um, uh, doing Night's Watch, as a personal, independent, just, you know, person, I would not be watching this Lord of the Rings show. Same. I would, like, boycott this crap. Mm. It's utter trash. They don't deserve my money. Yeah, you know, like, I wouldn't have watched Wheel of Time after the first three episodes, right? Yeah, news channels reviewed like footage of 9/11, and that was pretty awful. So mm. we'll have to review this too. Um, Although I feel like the Lord of the Rings is arguably but worse. The, but I think it's it's actually I don't know. I don't, uh, it won't be as successful as they hoped. It's no, it's not going to be Game of Thrones no. engagement at all. But how much it's already, it's already, the already they're not going to put any nudity. That's they're right. putting a sex scene in it. I know. Yep. Um, so, um, I, uh, 
there's too much hate against it where the first, I mean, Game of Thrones, the first season wasn't this, everyone wasn't aware of the first season before it dropped, but after it dropped, word of mouth and just goodwill just built Same thing with it Arcane. up. Like Arcane. Like, Arcane was basically unknown when it dropped. I saw no yeah. promotion or anything. It just, oh, thing appear on Netflix. And I decided to watch it just because that art style looks cool. Yeah. I watched it. It, it looks a bit fantasy, it. and then I really liked it. And then I was like, "Guys, you gotta watch it." And mm. and so it's interesting how something of uh, such, I guess, under the radar, unknown thing can uh, explode just because it's so good. That's what happened with Game of Thrones. This one already has huge attention to it because it's Lord of the Rings, but it's not going to be Game of Thrones at all. No. Yeah. Um, it's going to be worse than they expected, but it's still going to be pretty. Uh, I, I believe it's going to be. Uh, seen decent i hope i'm wrong i want it to bomb because i don't want them uh, you know just abusing something that's special but it's going to do well and the other side of it they uh won't be able to abandon it because it's going to be their flagship thing of carrying the message yeah this is why they're not going to abandon a wheel of time and wheel of time is like underperforming in a big way yeah it's going it's going to be like batwoman they they feel like it'll be like so bigoted of them to uh, cancel something that is such a shining thing of representation and inclusion yeah. that Amazon will just be happy to lose banks of money on it. Because they could just get it back. <clears throat> well, they got insane amounts of money coming from everywhere else. Yeah. That they're not going to cancel Wheel of Time. They'll just let it move on like the undead husk it is. And I reckon that's going to be Lord of the Rings. They'll yeah. go through all five seasons, even though people will be hating on it. But, mm. but that's the thing though, right? They don't make bank from us. They make bank from the banks. Mm -hmm. They literally get a rating that says, oh, you're working off? Okay, here's some capital investment. Oh, yeah, then they get... Inver yeah, and they get money, but they just get it back. Same with Disney. Disney got, what, like 600 million from... Might have been Citibank? I don't know, one of them. But they just just got it out of the blue. It's not a sustainable system, though. It it has to crash sometime. Look, uh, outside of you know people's desires, there have been market crashes. They can't. They can't. Oh, avoid it ain't it. outside of design, man. They do this mm. stuff on like, like the the housing bubble on purpose. I don't know. I saw the big short. It wasn't. It wasn't... They knew what would happen. Well, only a few people knew what was happening. No, the banks knew exactly what they were doing. Interesting movie, The Big Short. The, again, yeah. it's like, hey, we'll sell them crap. I don't know how you. I shouldn't really reference that as anything, but I haven't. No, uh, that's where I kind of got it from too. But I got a bit more stuff like uh, the the Beast of Jekyll Island. Anyway, um, yeah, they were selling crap. Knew it was crap, and we we're just waiting for people to catch on to it. <laughs> and when it did, they're like, oh, we made money anyway. That's true. A lot of these, you know. Um, People just make out like bandits when yep. after the crash because they, then, there's a system that they can abuse and then take advantage of. But the thing is, though, you can work the system to your own advantage. Well, there is a system in place. Mm. That's how I was able to buy out these houses and stuff, right? Um, because uh, the value's increasing and uh, money, like, the, it's crazy how low interest rates are. Money is almost free to, like, at this moment. So there are ways that I could, uh, the house I want to build, I could uh, sell the two houses I have to try and fund it, right? Yeah. I don't need to. I can borrow the money for it because I got enough. Um, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Equity um, mm. uh, to easy, uh, like cover everything I need to do. Repayments I can handle fine, and uh, the value of my houses will just increase mm. uh, until there is a proper serious crash some point which is around the corner. but if i could make out before it happens i uh, basically like i bought my first house for a hundred thousand dollars it's valued at two hundred thousand dollars i've earned essentially two hundred thousand dollars in what space of time um uh, uh 10 to 20 years it's around there right now where did you buy it um in like 2007 2008 2007 2008 okay and now it's worth how much double, double. two hundred thousand so in that's how many years? That's like uh, 2008 to 2022. Man. That's like 14, 14 years. years. Okay, so in 14 years, it's doubled in price. Mm -hmm. Okay, how the hell are me and him going to get a house? Look at that. Did I? <laughs> I didn't have the hundred thousand dollars. I borrowed that as well. Yeah. So all, all you need is the deposit um, and have a high enough wage for the banks to tick their things, mm. and you'll get it right. And so literally, I made two hundred thousand mm. dollars without doing a thing. 
I mean, sorry, $100,000 on top of the original $100,000, without doing anything. That's free money, mm -hmm. basically. And I was able to use the value of that house to buy the house I'm currently living in. And this house has gone up by $100,000 to $150,000 in value since I bought it. And I was able to use both houses to buy the Shadlands, the property. And the Shadlands <laughs> equity <clears throat> from when I bought it is insane because it was crazy. Like, that property, that like the Shadlands, it was unbelievably underpriced. Mm -hmm. Everyone who saw it, when I showed my dad and like, there, there has to be, he was like, he thought there had to be a catch. It's so underpriced. Yeah. There wasn't a catch. There was just really undervalued. And from the day that I bought it, its true value was actually over a hundred thousand more. And right now, and so it, I'm uh, using the system that is in place and you mm. can benefit off it greatly. Cause now I have three big bags of, you know, assets with lots of equity that I'm going to be using to build one of the, an awesome house that's going to have a huge studio for us to work in. And so, you can benefit from it. Sorry, if, if only our high schools taught us stuff like that instead of how yeah. f***ing we are. <laughs> that would have been hey, honestly, because you know how my dad, my dad was the one who taught me all that. Because my dad is, is a businessman, he's worked in this system. And so when I was working at Harvey Norman, I was, had a full-time job. And he said, you have a full-time job, your expenditure is really low, you've got no dependents, buy a house. Your mm -hmm. dad taught you stuff? Yeah, my oh. dad taught me heaps. Like, Lucky you. <laughs> Anyway. Well, I'm trying to teach you guys. Try to teach. Like, anyway. All right. I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah, like build. It like, sounds sa easy. <laughs> saving up the deposit can be a bit of a. It's free a, money. <laughs> well, the thing is, right? The deposit that I'd need um, to be able to get the loan approval for this next house, mm. I can get from borrowing against the equity I have in my assets. See, I don't and understand so what I the hell that means. So equity is. Uh, the uh, value that you have in an asset that you don't need to pay back. And so, for instance, my first house is worth 200000 mm -hmm. The loan amount on it, let's say, I don't know, I paid it off. With, I remember when I was buying this house, I was like down to 50 something thousand, right? And so that meant the remaining value of the house on top of what I needed to repay in it is equity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> so it's like your, your little piggy bank that you put back into this loan. Kind of. It's the value that you have in your assets that you don't owe anything on. Okay. <clears throat> that does. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and, uh, but the thing is, because I have the equity now, again, I can borrow against it and I don't need to save up the deposit. And so once you get one asset, that helps you get another and it can build up and, and to the point where, I mean, this house I'm going to build, it, it's not a cheap house. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's like a really nice house. And I said, it. it's going to be the most expensive house I'll ever have owned, right? I just, I find it funny, right? That you can have, you can have 5,000 bucks in your account and you're like considered poor. You can be $20 million in debt and have $20 million in your account and you're rich. Oh, it's golden. The, the it's, world we live in. It's There is a system in place. And if you just know how to work it, it can greatly benefit you. I'm sorry. Because this is one of the... I'm not saying our modern society is perfect, right? But there is a thing. There is an advantage to... With all the problems and how broken it is, anyone who is aware of it can use it to their advantage. You don't have to... It's not an exclusive thing where they deny anyone of colour or anything like that. If you work hard and you understand the system, you can... Use it to your own advantage as well. I don't think uh, our generation is going to be able to benefit from that system. Well, they're not taught about it. They're not taught it like, you know, like practical things that they should have been taught in high school. And they've got friends, though, who out of high school work. Now they're building and buying houses. Hmm? Oh, maybe I'm just one of the screw-ups then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Queen Elizabeth tests positive for COVID-19. Before we get onto that, because... Who cares? <laughs> I care. That's my queen. She is my queen. I'm being mean. We'll talk a little bit more about the role of Just ending off the subject that got us distracted on the economics and um, stuff. Mm. Uh, about the Lord of the Rings and the, all that stuff. So, my prediction is that they're going to keep making the crap. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know when it would stop. I, I think there's going to be a greater support in independent media that isn't trying to push an agenda and stuff. I mean, my book has done really well. We see other independent creators. There are independent comic book creators that fund their stuff on Indiegogo and the, there's the comic comic skates crowd, but then there are tangential people related to it as well. Um, and so independent uncorrupted media actually still exists. It's often in the areas in which people can are able to produce it. So individual people, 
and small groups can make comic books, they can write novels. Uh, TV shows and movies is the hard part to break into. Daily Wire is starting to make some headway. Um, hopefully it'll continue because uh, if there are independent companies that start making, uh, you know, um, TV, movies, related media and stuff, it gives another source, um, place, to be able to approach and pitch potential projects. Like, I don't have the means to be able to make my own film studio yet, who knows, right? But if uh, there are independent places that won't turn me down for the colour of my skin or the fact that I have conservative it. opinions, I have it. new places to approach to try and mm. say, I've got something that could be really cool. And that's that's a turning point. I think this is that significant. Hopefully we'll see more. <clears throat> that is very optimistic. And, um, but no, <clears throat> it, it already exists. The Daily Wire is making yeah, media. That's why they're changing the system so that can't happen. Oh, you reckon they want to try that? Stakeholder, stakeholder capitalism, yeah. They're literally like... Oh, no, but see, capitalism can also benefit other independents. And like, if there's a market for a desire, people are wanting yeah. unwokeified crap. Well, that's why the, the new version of capitalism they're trying to build is highly regulated. In mm. the sense that not only does the government regulate it, the market itself yeah. is choosing how it's regulated. And it's all from a central organisation halfway mm. across the world. And so... Mark of the Beast, man. Digital currency, everything like that. Yeah. Chip in the hand, chip in the forehead. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're like... Yeah, I'm not necessarily confident that the woke crowd will uh, change their ways and learn from their mistakes. They basically have to keep going until they... Destroy themselves. Destroy themselves, essentially. They will try to destroy <laughs> us. So it's, dude, yeah. this, this, is my, this is how it's going to go for me. This is my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. The culture war will turn into a literal war. And it'll prop might even be the final war. Mm, I'm not prophecy, kidding, man. prophecy. It's all been prophesized, and we're meeting every single. <laughs> well, there's a, a lot of tick boxes being ticked. Let's just say. Yeah. <clears throat> not just in not just in you know Christian you know uh, ideology, but also in well a bunch of others. Mm. But we won't go into other ones. Um, the final countdown. <laughs> living on a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I know it's a different song. Uh, yeah. So Queen. Elizabeth test positive for COVID nineteen. Um, she's she's gonna have so many resources. They will pump her with every. They're gonna throw the kitchen sink at her like they did with Joe Rogan, and no one's gonna accuse her of being a bigot or anything like that. Yeah. Um, an anti vaxxer or whatever bullcrap they said. Taking horse steroids was it? Just give her a new cycle of orphan blood. You know, like problem solved. No, but um, there was some news that came out about like um the. So she's not going to be in any hospital. What they're going to do is they have um, it's some sort of life support system that they're actually jacking into her throne. And so every day they'll have to sacrifice 10,000 psychics to keep her alive so she can she can uh, fuel the Astronomicon and have her <laughs> army of soldiers throughout the galaxy able to transition through the warp. Uh, and she will never truly die. <laughs> to live as a man in such a time as to live in the most soy-filled... I don't know. I don't know the whole quote. It's a Warhammer thing. Uh, anyway... Horizon Zero Dawn is racist because of cultural appropriation. Shad, did you know that in the future where humanity is completely wiped out by the machines we created and we're reduced to tribal remnants <laughs> wearing, you know, leaf frocks, um, you know, you won't be allowed to wear any clothing out of leaves because that's racist. <laughs> it's so dumb. Like, why can't people... The creators of everyone just say, you're, to the people who said this, you're such a moron, shut up. And just, if everyone just ignored these idiots, we wouldn't have a problem. I know why. Why? Because they've already given up to every other well, demand they made. Every what? Every other demand that these people have made, they've given into. I know, right? Like, they've, they, like, the only power they have is the power that these stupid companies have given to them. Mm. And I'm already... Uh, Dark on Horizon Zero Dawn because they made her look like avocado guy. <laughs> the guy avocado. Like she looks awful. Did you hear about the uh, the beard controversy? Yeah. No. So they are uh, on the the front cover. You can see the hairs on her face, and some guys like, why does she have a beard now? And so it was the That's... whole opposite of the. Uh, <laughs> it was a very. 
We were gonna like, all you, mammals have hair all yeah, over their yeah. body. It's just yeah, ours are really it thin. It blew up. So much attention was drawn to it, and the whole again, it's when political stuff comes from my dev space. <sighs> if you ignored it and just said that guy's an idiot, it'd be fine. I can't stand it. I can't stand this world. Like traditional beauty, you are shamed for wanting traditional beauty in media, everything. You have to love everything, even if. They have something in between your legs, but they identify. Uh, Suck the cock, bigot! Like it's unbelievable. The hypocrisy is it. Like you know, because at one point in time they were saying your sexual preference is your thing. You're born that way. Don't you dare shame anyone <laughs> for being attracted to what they're born with. But now, if you're attracted and desiring traditional beauty standards, no, you, you're a bigot. You have to, like, they're, it's like they're trying to impose, um, s like, sexual preference conversion therapy on the world. You have to like land whales. You have to like women with beards. You have to like all this crap. I can't stand it. I mean, it. I and, like my girls a bit of meat on the bone, just saying. But this is why I have such a negative reaction to uh, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, making the main character look like... Ronald a fat dude. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's I, like one of the Canadian truckers. <laughs> I was all playing with the idea of perhaps getting the Horizon Zero Dawn franchise, starting one, and I would have gone to two. Now, no, nah, I'm not even going to touch it. You guys, you're a woke crowd. You're a try to appease a thing and uh, get stuffed. What about beautifying mods on on computer? Because there's mods that'll probably make it look prettier. Yeah, uh, but. <sighs> I wouldn't do it because the, I wouldn't want to support a company that's purposely going that way. Right? Fair enough. Um, it's so tedious and annoying. I can't stand it. And you know one of the draws of the Horizon Zero Dawn? What? She was a hot chick. Well, doing cool stuff. That would have been like, in a perfect world. Why did Tomb Raider become so successful? Dude. Good Tomb gameplay, but the eye candy was part of it. Guys enjoy that. Let them enjoy it. Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider made me want to be a Womb Raider, <laughs> honestly. Anyway, Nathan, remember when you made those game characters? It's a, it's a, it's a bit too on okay. the rapey side there, Oz. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say I, I'd get rejected, but... Womb I... Raider. Raider implies... So is, is Tomb Raider raping that culture? Yes! With cultural pro oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they're well, entitled to because it's long dead and no one is, would have found it otherwise. Just like Angelina Jolie's womb. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, why do you think she has so many orphan kids? <laughs> All right. Hey Nathan, remember those those game characters you made? Yeah. And one of them looked like an Italian man, even though it was meant to be a sixteen-year-old girl. <laughs> do you remember that? I mean, it was it was a metahuman tool. I was trying to make her look less generic. The the, the actual words you used were uh, beauty standards. I'm pretty sure. Let's see if we have the image. It's up here somewhere. I made it look less pretty. On purpose, yeah. Yeah. What? Why? That's what I said. <laughs> it's a 16 year old girl, I don't want to be all. Alright. Okay, no. look, I, I, I get so what Here's an old fella. Looks like a regular old fella, right? Yeah. Here's the 16 year old girl. Hello, Eduardo. Hey, look, she, a... she's not uh, like. She Nick has a double. She's not Nikocado Avocado level. Still pretty bad. Um, look, the, one of the things that I uh, like. In the, I like ideals, especially the heroic ideal, okay? I want my heroes to be uh, beautiful, beautiful, right? <laughs> Physically, but also emotional, all that stuff, right? I want to aspire to be like them. That's why yeah. I want my heroes to be buff, super strong, and everything. And I want my, you know, hero women to be beautiful and have those things to aspire to. And look, I'll never be as buff as, like, Captain America or anything like that. But the ideal does help me want to improve myself. Yeah. Okay? And uh, any little bit of additional encouragement to help me get on a diet and lose weight is a benefit to society. All right? And so I can't stand this narrative that is like, oh, it's, it makes you feel bad about yourself. Unrealistic mm. booty standards and all that. All that <laughs> Unrealistic <bo> booty standards. <laughs> booty. <laughs> <laughs> now, society does have that. It does. It's pushed in front of you. Like, that's, that's fine. What I can't stand as well is that... They believe, I don't know, where do they get this idea that, um... Communist subversion. That's where Perhaps, it but by having beautiful women in media, that then guys suddenly, I, like, will not be able to get a date. Guys aren't getting dates for other reasons, right? Yeah. But guys, honestly, they, 
even though they can appreciate that standard, that standard is not that high in real life, okay? They meet a girl that is this wonderful person, they become more beautiful because they're attracted to their personality. That, mm. That's how the reality works. Like women are and, usually attracted and to And we've had decades of media back in the 80s and 90s that had this, you know, heroic standard. And guess what? People were still falling in love with each other. They weren't thinking, I have to... Look, and any guy that actually does think that, it's, it's far rare. Most guys, they do not... They, like, their standards are not that high. They will be happy with most women that are... Uh, you know, attractive enough, who shows any interest in them. Bang! All right? the That's most guys. And any guy that thinks that they need like a 10 out of 10 is an idiot and they will die alone and lonely in the end. Well, the 10 out of 10s will usually get with the 10 out of 10s. And they won't just be attractive people, they'll be people who are very, very talented and successful and stuff like that. Mm. But like, the male ideal nowadays that's put in the modern media is like... Tom Hollands and Timothy Chamoulet, whatever his name is from Dune, you know, like that's look at how that like, it's going down. We don't that, want you to be small and big. They say that, but there is a shocking amount of women who still want the um, traditional male ideal. Yeah, even the feminists. Even the feminists. It comes out like like these, there are these guilt-ridden articles written by feminists saying, "Is there something wrong with me that I still find the traditional alpha male attractive? I shouldn't." Toxic masculinity, but dang, they're hot. But toxic masculinity, <sighs> like it's like that though. They drool over competent, strong men. Uh, and they can't help it because it's biology. <laughs> it is really interesting that so much of one-day feminism is trying to make women act like men. It's yeah. like they're actually saying they they like masculinity only when they have it. Well, yeah, it's because masculinity is like masculine traits are towards the upper end of the dominance hierarchy, right? Well, they want women to go in, higher. In, so they have to in external traits. facing power. There's external um, flowing power and internal flowing power. Women's natural, uh, you know, stereotypical traits makes them great inwards facing leaders. This is why women usually balance budgets at home. They decide what's going to go for dinner. Wait, the wife does that? The wife does. Uh, can I get one so I can just give her my money? <laughs> Seriously. My wife handles the budget. She pays you guys. She's like the accountant in the business, mm. right? And I just are relieved that I don't have to deal with it because I don't like numbers and everything. Me neither, but, man. But women are great at multitasking on average, okay? And so there are a lot of tasks they can do really, really well. And so with inward flowing power, they're great homemakers, they're great organizers, things like that. Women can just rise to the top. And they naturally have throughout all of history, even in societies where they say they're all patriarchal, it's shocking how much power women have had Look historically. Right. Even back then, all right? They held the keys to yep. the larder. They were the heads of their household the for dominance. a lot of things. But in external facing powers, which is dealing with... Uh, relationships of other groups, societies and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where there might be certain threats and everything, you need the most imposing, strong person that can enforce their will, even by stature and uh, position and uh, all that stuff, naturally flows to uh, the traits that men have. Mm -hmm. all right? And so when it comes to dealing with even like issues between neighbors, but going further to uh, like issues between communities and nations, it's naturally fallen to the men because there is if there's an underlining like a threat of conflict or potential of conflict, you need the the people who are most engineered biologically to be able to deal with physical conflict. Mm. Like when men con men's conflicts escalate, it will always result in uh, um, physical altercation. On for the most part, that's well, how men time. that's how men naturally resolve conflict. Women don't naturally resolve conflict that way. They can. I'm not saying they can't get into those cat fights, but oftentimes they resort to other means to uh, resolve conflict and other things like that. Do women ever resolve conflicts? <laughs> I mean, Becky said they a have bitch. long memories. <laughs> yep, <laughs> um, and very good ones. And yours goes blank. Yeah, yes, right. So it's just interesting how the different genders have different natural ways that they resort to instinctively to resolve conflict and then apply which methods are best to resolve conflict on larger scales. Yeah. And because on larger scales, to enforce law and everything like that, the way to do it is with the threat of violence. That's how societies are held together. You obey the law because of the potential gun that can be lifted on you if you don't. It's the threat of violence. And when it comes to physical violence, mm. men are far more capable at it than women. But what if someone has the monopoly on violence, like our current, anyway? <laughs> but no, no, like this is basic biology mm. stuff. And so there's a reason why men have naturally risen 
to their state, like the, the, the heads of external flowing power and leadership. But guess what? They weren't the ones who were only saying we need to do it. It was the women pushing them in that role as well. Yeah. When there are barbarians at the gate, guess what? Who the, wi who the women want to deal with that threat? It's not them, it's the men! Yeah. <laughs> okay, women have wanted men in those roles of leadership, and then, because in a normal, like, healthy relationship, the men always listen to the women, mm. okay? The kings get counsel from their queens, in most cases, not saying every case or like that, but women have always pushed their voice to... Uh, to, so to say men only sort their interests because they are in power is utter bullcrap. There are so many large-scale policies that have affected the course of nations that were primarily instituted by women's influence when men were in power. The prohibition that was mostly pushed by women. Yep. That banned alcohol in the whole United States. To be fair, and it didn't now, really go that well. It didn't go well. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't help. But it's an example of a massive like policy, governmental policy, that was primarily pushed and campaigned for by women. Mm. And uh, it was, and uh, like, some of the things that they did, there, there were movies uh, showing, and there, there, there was the, like, protect the children, protect the family, protect the wife, the drunkenness was bad, and all that stuff, right? All the sentiments for why alcohol bad was mm. coming from a very feminine perspective, and they were pushing it, and it went through, okay? And so, to Hold say... To say what? Like, How long did it last? You know, like six I years. can't remember. Six but years. to say women have had no influence in government or anything like that because they weren't in the roles is absolutely nonsense. And it's it's stupid. It's dumb. It's not mm. true because men have always listened to women. Because guess what? They're half a freaking society. Okay, <laughs> it's just. Uh. Well, to be fair, we have more women in positions of power now than ever. <laughs> is it going well? We might need to come. No, but that, okay, but in all seriousness, right? Men and women are different, and those differences help us make up each other. Mm. Like, women fill in things for us, and we fill in women, you know? It's just like, that's how it works. It is interesting, and this part perhaps needs to be cut, right? We'll see how we go. Um, <clears throat> women are biologically engineered to be more compassionate, okay? Mm -hmm. They will respond to a child's cries faster than a man will, mm. because they can't ignore it. I, I, it, like they are made biologically to be great nurturers, and this is a, this is a benefit and trait. Like it's a huge benefit and trait for one of the main roles women will fulfil and hopefully will continue to fulfil as being the mother. Right, mm. and uh, they are built to be far better nurturers than men. Mm. Men are built to be far better protectors, okay, and providers because of strength and biological conditions, things, and so there are natural roles. The thing is, though, there are issues when. Uh, um, compassion and nurturing gets misplaced on a larger scale when, what do you mean? for instance, the um, welfare state oh, yeah. is actually, I'm not saying that men can't promote it, but it comes from a more feminine idea of nurturing, helping and stuff. And I'm not saying helping people is wrong, but I'm saying you only help people who uh, deserve it. If they're disabled and all those things, you do need social safety nets. But to just have a blanket welfare state where everyone gets... Is not, no, you need to encourage people to get off their lazy butts and work. Mm. But that comes from a more fathered, masculine perspective. Because the father is usually the disciplinarian and say, get off your butt, do some friggin' work. Okay? You'd say that to me often, do you? Oh, well, I'm funny. <laughs> no. No, but, and, and so, but on a large-scale society... Mm. One mentality I feel is actually more beneficial for a society, and that is the more masculine approach to getting people off their butts and working, because I think a blanket welfare state is bad, but we need a balance of views, because yeah. we, I feel we do need social safety nets, and if it's the whole masculine approach, they can just, you know, because um, uh, like the idea that the poor are there because they deserve that's wrong. Mm -hmm. There needs to be uh, compassion, and so you need to hear... Sometimes it can come from a male source, but oftentimes it'll come from a feminine nurturing perspective that is they will have more uh, um, instinct to look after people who are, you know, less fortunate. Um, and it comes from basic biology. Keynesian economics is a better mm. to social welfare. Keynesian is, we've had it in Australia for a while until mm. recently where it's like the government invests into projects in infrastructure and pays mm. the lower classes to 
yeah. kill the work, right? Much better than work. Well and done. well, if you think I'm uh, saying that there's something wrong with or incorrect about this approach that uh, different genders have different instinctive approaches to how to deal with things in society, mm. have a look what modern feminism is pushing. They're these little warriors that saying first women are disadvantaged; they need help. But after that, what have they been pushing? Transgender rights, a lot of I, I, well, equality not, I, in the workforce, regardless, and, and they're pushing it so far that now we have these, you know, hiring quotas. There's full on discrimination against men and white people and all that stuff. And mm. feminism, mainstream feminism, is full on behind it. They're pushing it massively. I wouldn't blame feminism for that though. They've been mm. tricked, just like a lot of people were early in all of this stuff. Like I was when I was in high school, indoctrinated mm. into it. They have been indoctrinated into it too. This is literally See, communism. I don't know, because I think a lot of the people indoctrinating them are feminists because there's a role that naturally falls to women a lot, mm. and that's the school teacher. Yeah. yeah, okay. But they were still indoctrinated. And, and so there's heaps now. of feminists that have gotten into um, the past of leadership mm. that are crazy, you know, extreme feminists, and extreme feminism also supports all this other woke stuff. Yeah. Okay. But what I'm saying, it's not um, surprising that extreme feminism, which is mostly, you know, pushed forward by the lead women, mm. right, are sub trying to then over nurture all the people that they feel are being disadvantaged, the minorities uh, and everything, so much so that it's intersectionality. Feminism, like... Yeah, but it, that comes from Marxist belief. Exa and... Exactly, but, it, but the idea of wanting to help anyone that they see as an oppressed actually comes from a very feminine biological instinct, mm. okay? I'm not saying it can't happen with men, there are exceptions, but the general rule that's more representative is yes. Yeah. And there's no, uh, there's no mistake, or uh, should be surprised, that mainstream feminisms embrace this idea of intersectionality and want to support and push everyone who they see as uh, a minority, mm. oppressed and everything like that. But look and, at TERFs. And this is where, the, you know the, the idea of the devouring mother? Yeah. This is where the the idea of the devouring mother gets out of control. That, that's what mainstream feminism is. Mm. It's the a devouring mother, out of control, wanting to coddle the world, protect everyone's feelings, so you, you, you don't have to face difficulties in life and all that stuff, when more often, and now I'm gonna say, there's a need for that in early childhood and all that stuff, to, mm. but ch children do need to be exposed to difficult things. I've even seen it in my own relationship with my wife, right? I remember when my first son, he was, he, we took him to a playground and he started to try and climb the, um, the, uh, the slide. It was a big slide. And my wife was like, no, no, don't do it, he'll fall. And I'm like, no, he'll be fine. If he falls, I'll catch him. And I was willing to risk any, and look, I knew it wasn't a risk because I would um, caption, but it was a more risk letting him try and do this on his own mm. than not. And it was just interesting to see the natural instinct my wife had versus the natural instinct I had where I wanted him to try difficult things to learn and to grow, even if it was potentially risk averse. And it's already a fact in clinical psychology that men are, m are m willing to take more risks than women. Okay, and there are risks in life, and you do need to expose your children to certain levels of risk so they can grow and everything like that. And they do need to be protected and nurtured a lot as well. And that's why children raised by a father and mother is the best thing to get birth to both worlds and all that stuff. When I when I have kids, first mm -hmm. lesson I'm going to teach them when they're about four or five, I'm just going to put them in the dryer, turn it on. They will learn something. They will. They'll learn what pain. I disavow. Is. <laughs> I disavow. But fathers, soft, fathers yeah. more often are willing to uh, let their children be exposed to a bit of risk to help them learn and progress than often the mother is. It's just the standard thing, in, you know. Can you, I want to run something by you because this is a thought that I've had for a while, right? Okay. Like women are more nurturing, right? Men aren't. But Men I, no, can be more nurturing. Yeah, they can, can be but nurturing. less. Yeah, yeah, less, less right? Often, yeah. I feel like when either gender is emotionally compromised, those states actually flip. That's what I think. I think that mm. when men are emotionally compromised, they become more nurturing. M more feminine. No, not more not more feminine, but mm. it's like the shadow of their gender, right? Mm -hmm. They, when they're emotionally compromised, men become more, you know, oh, come here, man, you know, like stuff like that, right? Mm. They're more nurturing. But when women are emotionally compromised, they're cold. That's what I've noticed. Like when my dad was pissed and then we had an argument and then we uh, settled see, down. I don't think that plays out completely because really? in... Especially in group dynamics, mm. um, women are far more emotionally expressive and consoling to uh, other, their, their female friends when they're like sad and everything. I yeah, find but they're it not emotionally compromised when that happens. I mean, when they are emotionally compromised. I don't know. Compromised. When they push the limit and the waterworks start flowing and everything like that, they need uh, oftentimes some type of connection and consoling. Like, I find it interesting how quick and uh, 
instinct of my wife understands when she sees a woman in distress, there was a, a family friend, her husband had died and everything like that, and she was saying what was happened, I couldn't predict that she was ready to break when she was explaining how her husband lost. But my wife instantly knew that, she walked in, gave her a hug, hugged her, and the woman broke down in tears. Yeah, yeah, and my wife just knew that instinctively, where I was not aware of it. Yeah, yeah, but your wife wasn't emotionally compromised. Like, mm. let's say two men get into a fight, they're good mates, right? Mm. When would that happen, okay? Ever. Okay. <laughs> afterwards... Never never here, yeah, no. Afterwards, they're generally, like, they make up, they're okay, right? Not in the mm. way... Anyway, but, like, when women do it, there's a lot more salt in the wound, you know what I mean, it seems? Well, that's just conflict resolution. Men resolve conflict physically, and then oftentimes that can lead to mutual respect and mm. appreciation and friendship. And also, something I learned the other day, stress actually helps men bond... Whereas for women, it does the opposite. It's because there's a certain chemical in the brain mm. for when you get stress that when it happens, mm. if like two or however many men, like armies, for example, are working together and stressed, that actually mm. helps them build bonds. Whereas for the women, it's the exact opposite. Security helps women build bonds. Interesting. I would need to check that one. Um, this came from Michaela Peterson. Did it? Okay. While she's um, talking to her dad and mum. Well, yeah, Jordan Peterson is a psychologist. If he didn't challenge it, that kind of goes with his approval because yeah. he has done insane amounts of research on psychology, gender uh, dynamics and all that stuff. Um, so what I'll say, like men, when they're really stressed and they need support and everything, they don't support each other like women do oh, stereotypically. They support... And it, what I love about it is that Oftentimes women, they just instinctively know how to support other women because that's how they would be want to be supported when they're in that. And men also instinctively know how to support other men in a lot of ways. Sometimes it doesn't work when a guy just doesn't respond well to the natural kind of uh, hazing men can do to the friend men's can do amongst their friend groups to help lift each other and stuff. And that's a problem. But, that's but a problem. A lot of men, most men, do respond really positively to that. Um and like, even when I'm stressed, Oz knows that he can lift me by cracking a joke, maybe throwing a dig my way, throwing a dig his way and stuff like that. And it's this thing that instantly know that to help cheer men up yeah. when they're, uh, you know, If you try to stuff. cuddle someone as a man and they're feeling like, oh man, are you okay? If like, he came and hugged me, I'd be like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's not right. But if I say, you know, but get up, you stupid retard. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Um... <laughs> But no, I, it's really interesting, okay? Guys are easily as emotional as women to say that men are, that's wrong, but they deal with emotion differently. Mm. Guys usually need to internalize emotion. Women usually need to externalize emotion, express it. They will cry more often. They will console each other. They will share their emotions. Where guys, they don't necessarily, sometimes just talking about it with a mate can do the thing, but sometimes just not talking about it and letting him process it and doing something that can distract them is what we need. Mm. And just having the company... You're, you're nodding there. <laughs> it's I assume the nothing box. Mm -hmm. The nothing box? Yeah, the guys, we have we have nothing boxes. What's or like, the way our brains work, this was a good video with, with women, their brains are like barbed wire. <laughs> Everything's connected. The kids connected, the car connected, the school connected, the husband, like everything is all connected. It's just this big ball of nothingness. <laughs> guys, our brains work like boxes. We have the box for the car, the box for the wife, the box for the kids, and they're all separate. And when none of those boxes are being used, we go to our nothing box, whether it's playing games or doing woodwork or or painting our minis. And women don't understand that because everything that they do, it's all connected. And so when we say we're doing nothing, they're like, how? Everything's connected. What do you mean you're doing nothing? There's a barbed wire spool in my conspiracy box. It's <laughs> yeah. all connected. But yeah, so I just laugh with that, but it's like, yeah, for guys, like for girls... They, they have to externalize it more because everything is connected and it's kind of their way of letting it out. But then for guys, we just go to nothing box, mm. process it, and we're good. I mean, there's a, there's a great book. If you really want to learn about differences between men and women, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. It's a classic book. It actually has a lot of good truth in it. And some of the things that I, it talks about is an idea of uh, caving. That men, when they stress they need to go into their cave, leave them alone, let them process stuff, where women are completely different. Uh, and seriously, learning about this stuff is a part of being married, but it also is helpful if you're aware of it before marriage, and it should be taught and understood, but that's gender essentialism, and how dare you? And for the sake of, like, tiny groups of people that are the exceptions to these normal standards, they don't want to offend them, they're willing to upend mm -hmm. all of society that's built upon these foundations, and you need that foundation for most society to prosper, for men and women to get along, to understand one another, and 
like it's it's so basic when i was married right my wife was upset for one thing and she's dealing with it she starts to talk about it right i need to, to learn and i got this wrong in the first one that she didn't want me to fix it and the guys guys are the fix it mentality right guys fix stuff when there's an issue and so i was like all right we can do this it's like and she she has like i don't want you to fix it i want you to listen to me and i was like but the, the, in my head, I was like, this doesn't freaking make sense! Why? But it, she didn't need that. She needed the emotional validation over the guy approach, which is like, let's fix the issue. Can you do both? Like, because when I listen to someone <laughs> and I get really invested, I'm like, oh man, that sucks. Let's do something about it. But this is the thing, right? You've responded like that to me when I've expressed my issues and it does what I... like. You help me brainstorm through it. Mm. Um, I remember you did that when I was trying to figure out something with the publishing of the book. Like, we, we, like I helped? You, you did help because you responded in the way that guys would naturally... Like, like, I, you know, fix the problem. A lot of the time, most of the time, this is how guys are. Guys need that. Um, but that's not what my wife needed. And I needed to learn how to help her... And then she's, of course, needed to learn how to help me and stuff. And uh, so it's part of life. It's part of having a healthy marriage. Mm. And you need a healthy marriage because the children uh, are raised under the best conditions with the mother and father. And so mother and father needs to get along. And it's like, this is the fundamental nuclear unit, the, the nuclear family, right? It's the bedrock of society. And modern society is trying to subvert it, trying to destroy the fundamental family the things that we need to learn to get old, it's its its so fundamental to so much of what's happening in society um, and how society needs to get along to succeed, and it's all related. If only we had an institution that upheld those, you know, those essential parts of life and living. Well, for a lot of the world, there is. It's called religion. Yep. Christianity, specifically. But Reddit told me that religion is and bad. The, and there are... Best Christian is Latter Day Saints. Sorry, it's the true faith. Not a cancer. You know, Nietzsche. <laughs> he said uh, the only Christian who ever lived was Jesus. Uh, you know, I could I could understand where it's coming from. We're, we're like we're all imperfect. We're trying yeah. to achieve the ideal. The attempt to be perfect will make you a far better person than just thinking you'll never achieve it. So you don't even try. Yeah, mm. and remember to forgive yourself too. And to ask mm -hmm. for forgiveness. No, but like Christianity is uh, the institution that has been supporting these fundamental things. Guess what's being under attack a lot in the modern day? Mm. Damn, we went on a... Well, I say we. Shad went on a massive spool there. That was like an I entire mean, novel. You didn't help either, Oz. What did I... When have I ever said anything wrong in my entire life that has ever caused Shad to speak loudly and quickly? Never once. Never one time. Shad... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next bit of news. Um, the Empire has cracked down on the Can Adian uh, cargo runners. Poor Adians. Yep. Well, actually, it's the system is Can and the planet's Adia. It's like the Can Adian system. So. so, so the Cans? Yeah, that works. Okay. So. Um, yeah, we'll have to see how this plays out. Interesting that violence only broke out. As soon as the police, the stormtroopers rolled up. Oh, but they'll say they were committing violence already. Violence, emotional violence. Just standing there, hon honking your horn is violence, don't you know that? It's illegal. Yep. <laughs> In this clown world, honking is violence. No, but uh, did you see they brought a bunch of speeders through to break up the crowd, and uh, one of the speeders hit an elderly lady, and then they mm. tried to claim that Oh, we all know you're concerned, but uh, we have no reports of people getting run over by speeders. In fact, someone threw their speeder at the other speeders, and the speeder that was apparently thrown by the crowd was just that old lady's walking frame that was beneath her feet when she got trampled. Mm. And there was another guy, uh, one of the leaders. I just, I can't believe what they try and say when the video is there to be seen. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like they say all these things, they overtly lie when there's evidence all over the place. Huh. Um, but also, there was a video of one of the leaders, the news came out like, oh yeah, there's a warrant out for the arrest of this guy, and the guy saw it and he's like, well, okay, he turned himself in. He just walked straight to the front of the crowd, he's like, uh, I heard from the news that you guys are looking for me, is that true? Okay, and he just walked through and he got arrested, and everyone was just saying, we love you, brother, stuff like that, as he walked away. And I was just thinking, that's like... Gee, these are violent extremists. Yeah. They gave up. This they... has been like one of the greatest, you know, 
protest server, right? It's non-violent. And they're trying to get their voice Canadians. heard. Like, you know, <laughs> well, sorry, just it's... compared to other non-violent <laughs> protests recently. I'm just picturing. Like, the, the contrast is so clear, and it's just it's. Look, face off has been for ages, but it's another face off moment where. The media was playing protection. The government, you know, was expanding it, laws just to get them. No, no, but, down but like accounts. the the peaceful protests, how mm. they were supported. The governments would not denounce oh, them. The peaceful protests. The peaceful protests. Yes. Oh, the Those, fiery but peaceful protests. The, the fiery the, the, but peaceful protests. The peaceful protests. protests that resulted in forty deaths. <clears throat> the peaceful protests that cost millions and millions of dollars in structural damage. Yes, yes, those peaceful protests. Oh, yeah, okay. How they were supported by the government, yeah, the yeah. institutions, the media, yeah. and all that stuff, and no one would denounce it, right? Uh, but now. Look at what they're doing. Like a, a truly peaceful... Pro oh, like, the hypocrisy is unbelievable. I can't believe there have been zero deaths at this violent protest versus the nine months of peaceful protest which resulted in 40 deaths. Numerous buildings uh, being burnt down. Star Wars is cities. a messed up place. Yeah, I know, right? They're good at fiction because if that crap was real, like, oh my goodness. Yeah, ridiculous. Mm. Coruscant riot rioting, just mm. inner city, man. Yeah, it's like mm. inner city systems, you get this sort of... Crazy rioting. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, ah, here we go. Uncharted movie has come out. I didn't realize. Me neither. <laughs> Nathan told me this morning. I knew. I was like, are you going to watch it? And I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, I don't really want to watch it. I saw it on the Discord because it said, hey, Nathan's in this movie. He's not wearing his glasses. And he looks like Spider-Man. But if Nathan like... Fillion, that's his name? Nathan Fillion. If he was in it, I would have like... It's... I don't know. They missed it's a such a miscasting. It's turned me off the film. I like. I don't care. At Chris all. Pratt would have been Brad Pitt. I mean, yeah, yes. Like something that because to me, it just even if the movie's great, I haven't seen it. Right. It gives me the impression that they don't care about trying to reflect the source material as no, is, and I'm not interested. Then I want to see a movie that's good, like trying to reflect what it's supposed to be. Yeah, they're saying that the, if you separate the Uncharted IP from it, you get a good action flick. Yeah. <laughs> but like, if you try to judge it with the stuff from the Uncharted games with what's in the movie, then you're not going to be That's an happy admission. With... It's just an yeah. admission on their part. It's like, okay, then to... why, why have that IP? And to me, that just says, I was exactly right to not even bother with this piece of crap. It's like, oh, thank you for confirming my suspicion. I will not be watching it. Because when you watch oh, sorry, you an Uncharted that. movie, you want to see things from Uncharted. Shocking. Yeah, how's it doing in terms of uh, money? How much money? Is uh, it? It's, it's good exceeded. Money. No one cares. Oh, oh has exceeded? it? Well, more than I expected. Oh, okay. But um, so they expected the bomb. I reckon it's yeah. gonna fall off pretty heavily. Mm. I don't know because we've had lots of game movie, and, and Sony wants to make more movies with their games I pace. Yeah. You know, I was wrong. Yeah, I wanna, They've had it, successes and fails on that front. If they just make a good one, that is. Yeah. Well, they're doing the uh, the Last of Us TV show right now, which they're adding. <laughs> there was some stuff with adding uh, a, a deaf black person, and people were like, "That wasn't in the game. Why are you putting it in the TV show?" I just want to compare this to the Sonic movie, right? Because the the Sonic original thing was like a miscasting, but yeah. because it was digital, they could replace Place, it completely. Yeah. But that built such goodwill. That a lot of people was now willing to give it a go. Would it be hilarious, like, if they first showed um, Holland's thing as Ethan Jake, they responded to the outcries like they fight him and just replaced him? Honestly, that would have got my interest. I would have went to see it as like, because that would have told me, sorry, Tom, I, I, I don't know much about you. You might be a nice guy. <laughs> uh, he's woke as hell. Oh, fire him. Severely Get someone woke. who actually affects the thing. To me, that would have said that they care about the source material. They want to make something to please the fans and everything. That would have garnered such goodwill, I would have watched it. Mm. And then we probably would have reviewed it. Even if it was bad, it pro like, probably would get more attention to it. We don't even give a stuff now. Right? Yeah, now this movie will be uncharted. <laughs> that was awful. Okay, so, female Halo Infinite players asked for more feminine body types for their playable space rangers. All of the threads were locked. People just asking over and over again, can we have more feminine body this types? This is the problem. Guys would be asking for that as well, I bet. The female players who were posting this were saying, and men want more masculine ones too. No, no, men will want more feminine ones as well. Yeah, oh. for Shad. Huh. Oh, that's transphobic, Shad. 
No, 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 I actual one that looks like a, that is a woman, that looks like a woman, that you can appreciate. Making a spicy joke. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Not on your expense. Mm, yeah, no, 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 Shad, seriously, it wasn't at your expense. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, but yeah, so, uh, and they were just locked No, I agree, out. give us some female Spartans. No, they they are female, but they're not feminine enough. Yeah, so they need a, what, a bit more size in the upper area, and, and perhaps area. in the rear area, and just some curves. Halo Reach had it, Halo yeah. Reach had it. Alright, um... Make them look sexy! Guys would be on board with that too! Which guy is gonna be like, oh, woke crap, giving you sexy spiders? No, no, no. I want sexy spiders. <laughs> I mean, the, the rejection is when they try and present a leading female that looks like a guy. That's when guys are like, what are you trying to make us gay? Yeah, and you can go and play Abby? Through Dawn if you want, or Last of Us 2. Up to you. And I don't get, they'll give Spartans cat ears, but not more feminine features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll give. They'll make it all kawaii and cute See? and. and Whatever. They don't. They don't want guys to be attracted to women. <laughs> and they don't want vice versa. It's almost mm. like it's a big uh, consorted effort. It's kind of global, isn't it? Yeah, it's globo <laughs> something. Something rhymes with glo. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that word will become socially acceptable when the war begins. All right. Um, Battlefield devs blame Halo Infinite for the failure of Battlefield 2042. It's their fault. And you know what? No, it's not. Well, it kind of is. They made is a better 2042, game. 2042, is that the crap one? The most recent one, one yeah. The, the new one, yeah. yeah. I get, I get killed. Battlefield, Modern Warfare, I don't know. They get a, <laughs> it's all a mesh to this bleh thing. I can't it. <coughs> It's making him sick. Oh no, I, got, I was going to dish Shad and then the universe said no. <laughs> Sword, dagger, shield. They're all the same. How dare you? Look, look, look. Dare you? I got I gotta go with Shad's side here, okay? A sword and a shagger. shagger. <laughs> Tell you what, give me a shagger. I want one of those, whatever that is. A sword and a dagger and a shield are very different things. They are very okay? different. Cutlass, they're, they're long sword. More, they are more distinctly unique than Battlefield and Modern Warfare and whatever. That's a fact. In terms of features and I'm just trying to make a comparison here, okay? <laughs> you fail! You failed, Nathan. But yeah, um, they're blaming. So guess, guess, just guess how many players are on the Steam charts for Battlefield 2042 a game that came out how many months ago? It was um, November. November. Uh, ten thousand. Lower. A uh, thousand. A thousand. There's about wait, what was it? So their 24-hour peak for two days ago was two thousand players. What's the average on all game releases? The average was eighty thousand for Steam. <laughs> now, Halo Infinite, which came out how many? How long before? It came out before Battlefield. Yeah, was it was it in September, October? Tem no, about probably October of October, last year, yeah. like a month before. Yeah, that's on sixteen thousand players still, which I'm still not happy with. They need to go lower too. That means that that's game not has many, to die. But, yeah. yeah, Halo Three, which had twelve million people buy a copy. Um, yeah, so and they blamed they blamed Halo for it. No, it's your fault, you useless devs who made a game that was completely different to the rest of the series. They took away features, it was a buggy mess. It was just awful, man. Awful. People just can't take responsibility and try and improve. They have to deflect. They have to tear it down. They yeah. have to tear it down. It's meant to be bad. Insecure, untalented. Mm. Um, so, we already did the fishing one. Yep. Yeah. So, that's all that I had in my little list here. All right, well, we've got plenty of stuff that we talked about, so I don't think we need to push it even further. <laughs> yeah, man. Is it hot in here or is it just me? <laughs> I didn't turn the air It on. is. <laughs> I'm boiling. I'm ugh, sweating my balls off. Mm. Thank you for watching Nightly News. Okay, so we do this thing, right? It's been a thing that me and Nathan have been doing for a while where we do this awkward... We, well, it's a different cut every time, isn't it? Have you been watching it? Yeah, now and then. Seen, did you see the one from last episode? Well, now you've gone past what I've seen in Boba Fett, so I can't watch your review. Because, no. And I don't really care to watch it because it's so bad, and so oh, I don't okay. know. Maybe I'll just... But I do want to just see what they did to try and abuse and rape Star Wars by, you know, grabbing fan service. Watch the service. last episode. Yeah, um, and, uh, so I do want to just see that. Uh, so I do expect that I will eventually watch it. When I do, then I'll probably check out your reviews. You kind of missed the point of what I was asking you, but that's all good. Just okay. add to how you want to end it. <laughs> we'll see you in the next watch.